Hello and thank you for coming to check this out. So, um, we are going to look at how to run the overshoot behavior through a sequence text. And uh, first of all, I have to say a huge special thank you to a chap called Anatoly Kotlinski. Uh, when the overshoot behavior first came out, how to get it to run through a sequence text was a real mystery. And Anatoly Kotlinski at a Facebook group shared with us the secret recipe. And that's uh, something I'm going to pass on to you today. Um, but what we're going to do is look at uh, how to animate overshoot through sequence text. Uh, we're going to take it a step further. I can add something else to make it useful for you uh, in that we are going to look also at how to get that overshoot behavior to animate out. Uh, and we're going to look at some of the compromises you have to make in order to do that. Uh, but if you are interested in little tips for rigging uh, for your Final Cut titles, this is something that might be of interest. Uh, okay, doke, so let's get started. To get started, I just have the text and the sequence text behavior is applied to it. Uh, let's trim that sequence text behavior out to two seconds in the timeline. Okay, so the recipe to run overshoot through sequence text, the first thing we want to do is set sequencing to from keyframes, and then we're going to add uh, our parameter that we want to overshoot, and I'm going to use scale for this one, and then we're going to add opacity as well. Okay, so we're set to run from keyframes, which is the setting you need so that we can run the overshoot through the scale parameter. So I'm going to just grab scale and add my overshoot like I would normally. Make sure it's trimmed out to the same place in the, as the sequence text is. Let's set the start value at minus 100 and give it a cycle of 1. So it's partially up and running now. I'll just set the spread to 5 and I'm going to set the speed to per object. Okay, so it's up and running but as you can see the text is visible until each unit has its turn to run through the overshoot. And this is the magic trick that Anatoly shared with us. Uh, so we applied opacity, so we're going to come back to the start, we're going to set a keyframe on opacity and drop it down to zero, come forward one frame, bring it up to 100, come to the end of your sequence text and set another keyframe on 100. And by some sorcery it works now. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the overshoot behavior in general. I did a guide to it a while ago um, and there's a link in the description if you want to check that out. I think so far it's kind of like a, an underdeveloped behavior. It's a really good tool. The thing with the overshoot behavior, and this is what we're going to look at later in this guide, it's kind of like a one direction thing. Um, you can reverse it a couple of ways, but the best ways to reverse the overshoot behavior you can't use in your Final Cut effects templates and you can't use it in your title templates because the best thing to do is to clone it or use a scrub filter and Final Cut won't accept that in the template. As soon as you go to a title or effect template, you don't have the retiming option on your clones. So, um, we're going to look at another method. And we're going to look at how you can uh, use links, the custom mix slider of links to another object so that we can get some, provide the user of your template some control over the sequence out. So we're looking at um, a sequence text here. Okay, so I learned to rig the duration from a tutorial by uh, Mark Spencer, and there's a link in the description for you to go and check that out. Yeah, it's a Ripple training one uh, um, from a couple of years ago. So what we're going to do is just have a quick chat about that. So I've got the sequence text, it has uh, all these parameters you can uh, 
link to the sequence out and publish them, so we'll talk about that in a bit. Actually, first we've got to talk about the limitations when you use a sequence text from keyframes. Um, there's a known bug uh, that the backwards direction doesn't work and center to ends direction doesn't work. So forwards, random, and ends to center will work. Uh, and that makes applying the overshoot behavior to the X axis kind of uh, a one-way street. It can overshoot in nicely, but it won't overshoot out nicely. You need the forwards and backwards options for those. I think that's, yeah, that might be the only drawback that I can think of now. All oh, right, and of course the other thing is um, to reverse it out, you kind of have to, well, you have to sacrifice these values here. So you could publish ramp duration cycles and all of these things for the sequence in, but from what you'll see, the compromise is in order to put it onto a sequence text to animate out and provide some of these parameters, you have to sacrifice these things. So we'll talk about that soon. Okay, so yeah, the overshoot behavior is great to animate in, animating out, uh, is not so great and using uh, Final Cut titles and effects makes your options even fewer but that's the point of this guide we're going to look at a compromise and a way around it right so back to duration on the sequence text so to get control give control over the duration to the user of your template you would want to take this uh, End offset, start offset, end offset, this one here. So we are going to put this onto a slider. So my project's 30 frames a second. The sequence text is 2 seconds long, 60 seconds. We can think about it that way. I'm going to take this end offset, add it to a rig, new slider. I'm just going to call this duration in. Actually, I'm just going to call it duration, and I'll call the rig duration in and out. So I just put the end offset onto the slider. So I'm going to do it frame by frame just to give an example. So it's the sequence text behavior is 60 frames long. So let's make the maximum range 60 and the minimum range 0. So then if I want to uh, see the slider will now run from 0 to 60. So 60 frames, I want this value to be 0. This is the offset parameter on the sequence text and at 0 I want this value to be 60 so the end condition of the sequence text is now 60 frames back from here which is pretty much it just won't run at all so I'm going to add another tab in here and I'm going to set that at 30 which is halfway between 0 and the 60 and now I'll make this value 30 here. So now we have a slider that if I run the slider at 0 we'll get no animation. If it's at full it's gonna run the full 60 frames and at 30 halfway it should run for 30 frames one second. So something like that or you could just let it run naturally from uh, 0 to 100 or 1 to 100, whatever you like to do. So we are going to leave that duration there for now. And okay, so let's talk about creating the overshoot animation for a sequence out. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I'm going to rename my sequence text as sequence in. I'm going to duplicate it and send it to the end, the other end of my timeline there. 
I'm going to grab these opacity frames and reverse those. Okay, so now we want to add, I'm just going to rename that sequence out actually. Uh, yeah, so now we want to get some overshoot into the sequence out and we want it to be reversed. So I'm going to add an object to this group, it can be anything, I'm just going to use a square here. I'm going to grab the overshoot from the sequence in, I'm going to duplicate that, and I'm going to call that null. Now I'm going to drag this to the rectangle, and I am going to grab that overshoot behavior. I'm going to apply it to the squares scale. So now that square is picking up the scale from the overshoot. Why am I getting rotation on that? I'm not, it's a trick of the light. Okay, so I've got my null object here. Now I'm going to trim this null object to two seconds. And I'm going to shift that just a couple of frames back from the end of my timeline. So now I have this object with an overshoot on it sitting up here. So now I'm going to grab the overshoot behavior, come to object, choose convert to keyframes. Choose convert. So now this rectangle has keyframes uh, to recreate the overshoot. And remember I pulled, pulled it back two frames because when you do this it always seems to leak past the end of your project a couple of frames, so I got it just right. So now I'm going to grab these curves and reverse them. Okay, cool. So now I'm going to grab my sequence out. It's been stripped of the overshoot behavior, so the, it, the scale parameter is free to use again. It's still set to from keyframes, so I'm going to add parameter behavior link. I'm going to call this out scale to null, and now drag in the rectangle as the source. Scale. So properties, transform, scale, or. So now we have the overshoot out. So as I mentioned before, uh, using this method, we sacrifice all of these parameters that you could give the user of your template um, for the animation in. But the positive is that we have this animation on a sequence behavior out. The other thing you could do, by the way, is not use a null object at all, but you could just keyframe the overshoot out yourself by keyframing the X values, but it's never going to look exactly uh, a mirror image of the animation, in, which is why I choose to use the null method instead. Okay, so we have a sequence in, overshooting, we have a sequence out, overshooting, and both animations are running through sequence behavior, so now we can grab sequence out, and we can grab the start offset, of sequence out. Right, I need to remove this 
it's a copy so I need to remove this from that rig we did before reset the end offset don't forget that step okay and we were going to add the start offset to that rig that we did so add to rig duration and now add to rig duration and so for this one uh, with the slider at full I want that offset at zero with the slider at zero I want that offset at 60 and with the slider at 30 I want that offset at 30 so now I can grab this duration and publish it so the user of the template has one control for duration in and out and then uh, we can take uh, things like the spread for the sequence out you might want to give them individual control for sequence in, sequence out. I prefer to link them. Let's link the spread to behaviors, sequence in, controls, spread. And like that, you can link uh, these parameters. Uh, you could do speed. Direction, remember, uh, you would want to make another your own custom pop-up to remove backwards and center to ends. Um, you could, that'll do for now. Uh, just as I was getting ready to put this together in Final Cut, I realized that the last segment was cut short by a couple of minutes uh, but anyway so I'll just wrap it up properly now I mentioned earlier on that we we're going to use the custom uh, custom mix slider to create the animation now I was getting confused with uh, the guide that I just posted earlier on this evening uh, so anyway I think we pretty much covered everything uh, I have a few more guides in mind uh, just advice for uh, rigging um, and as I mentioned before if you really want to get a good foundation in rigging go and get ripple trainings rigging and publishing for Final Cut um, I, that's really really worth your time um, but what we touched on before is that uh, there are a couple of menus in here specifically character and things like speed that you don't want to link these directly and then publish them. You want to create your own pop-up for them first. And that's something I'll cover in another guide, just so you can weed out things like custom and things that you don't want in there, like constant, uh, and get rid of... Well, you might want to keep character without spaces, but you want to get rid of custom in here as well. Okay, so hey, thanks for spending the time to check this out. I hope that this was useful for you. Thanks for watching.